why I stopped shooting film in 2024. Now, my photography journey began on film, and while well, I'll admit when I was a high school student I wasn't exactly producing the best work, it didn't take long for me to start producing images all on film that I could actually be proud of. Some were even published in our local newspaper. But the rise of digital photography slowly took over my process for creating images. I purchased a Canon Rebel digital camera with a whopping 6 megapixels in about 2006, and immediately I fell in love with the ease of use, how you could review your images, and it just made the process for creating photographs a lot easier, and also in the long run, a lot more cost effective because I didn't have to get film developed all the time. But there was always something that I did miss about shooting film. There's just an imperfect beauty that you can't easily replicate on a digital camera. Let me show you what I mean. We're gonna take a look at some images I created recently using this fairly modern Canon Elan 7E film camera. I took this camera and my wife and I headed out to California. So these images you're looking at showcase the unique qualities of film. In these shots you see the natural grain produced by the 800 speed film. You can also see the strong halation, that reddish glow that is in the high contrast points, and the bloom that is coming off of the highlights. These are unique characteristics of film that you can't replicate with a digital sensor. Digital cameras have become so good that the photos look almost perfect, too clinical, too sterile. Things like eye autofocus, automatic exposures, being able to see your histogram right in the viewfinder, the digital level, and pretty optically perfect lenses have made capturing technically perfect images almost automatic. Now, I love this for my professional work. I know that I can trust my gear, go out and create beautiful images for people. But when it comes to my not professional work, the work that I do just for fun, it kind of takes a little bit of the adventure out of it. And I find myself always looking for that feeling of nostalgia, not from just creating the images, but the images themselves. That imperfect look is just a beautiful thing. So when I was gifted this older Canon film camera, I was so excited to use it. This camera uh, is manual focus. It doesn't really have a proper auto exposure function. You have to set the ISO manually. You get one roll of film and that's what you're stuck with for ISO. You have to adjust your aperture on the lens. You have to adjust your shutter speed with this dial here. And to focus it, you have to line up this little diopter inside. This camera looks like it would be so much fun to use. So I was really excited to head out to Moab with a friend of mine and use this camera more than the digital camera I brought with and enjoy the art of creating photos again. Using this camera helped me to slow down and become more intentional with the photos that I was capturing because there is so many limitations with it. So when I was looking at a scene, I would really think about my composition. I would think about how the light was playing off the shadows of the rocks and I would do everything with intention. And even despite the fairly high cost of processing the film, I thought this could be a really fun way that I break out of the digital world and enjoy just the process of photography again. And and then I got my images back and I and I saw it. My film camera has a major light leak. And now these images are kind of cool with that light leak. It definitely is something you don't replicate on digital, but it just kind of was disheartening. I didn't want to have every image I create with this film camera have that light leak. Now, I know that I can pop this back off and probably replace some of the seals, but I just still kind of got downhearted and I put this back up on my shelf. And for a while now, I've kind of given a rest the idea of using film and capturing that authentic aesthetic that film can create. Now, I have been implementing a bit of digital processing to my images to create a more vintage look and I have different presets that work fairly well, but there's just those subtle differences that can really set apart a true authentic film camera look from the digital uh, imitation of film. So I thought that was going to be how the rest of my photo career was. I was just going to use this and do my best to create vintage looking images, but without ever having that actual authentic feeling of film. But that is until 
I got a message from a company that has a beautiful solution for this dilemma. Behancer Software is the first realistic film emulator that actually can imitate the aesthetic of film photos. And this is much more than just like a Lightroom preset or a filter you might put on your images. The engineers at Behancer have done a ton of work to try to, as close as pop possible, replicate the aesthetic of film cameras. Effects like realistic looking grain, halation, and bloom help Behancer to come as close as possible to the beauty and feeling of a real film photo. Now while this software is fantastic at authentically replicating the look of a film photo, there's still the process of capturing photos. Is it possible to take this like $7,000 setup and make it feel the same as using something like this? Well, yes, kind of. Most every camera that we use now, either a mirrorless or a DSLR, has a way of automating pretty much every process for capturing images, from the auto focus, finding uh, the eye of a bird flying, or the electronic viewfinder giving us that really accurate representation of the exposure, to the ability to just review your images on your screen, all of these processes can be turned off. So I, what I did was I went out to photograph my niece Brooklyn and I took this setup, so it's a full frame camera and a 50 millimeter lens, which fairly well uh, imitates this camera and I turned off every bit of brains that this camera has. I put it into manual focus, I turned off the exposure simulator in the uh, viewfinder, I just relied on the little uh, light meter, I turned it into one photo per shutter click so I wasn't motor driving anything, I flipped the flippy screen around so I couldn't review my photos, and I limited myself to 24 frames because that's what you may get on a standard roll of photos and I went out to create these images you're seeing now. So these are the 24 images that I got with my niece and they're definitely not perfect but I do really like them and they do a good job of showing how Dehancer can replicate the film look. The first image you're seeing is a raw and then processed through two different film emulations in Dehancer. I really do love how these turned out. There's beautiful imperfections that are helping me get back to the feeling of actually shooting film. Now one thing that these images didn't perfectly replicate is the way that light can play with the film emulsion itself. So when you get a hard light source like the sun or street lights or whatever it might be, some of that light will actually go in through the layers of the film emulsion and may reflect or refract inside of the film. And so that will give you at the points of really high contrast that classic film looking halation. So this is actual light particles that are bouncing off of the back layer of the film and again hitting the red layer of film and causing this halo effect. Now this is something that I couldn't really replicate with the photos with Brooklyn, so I decided on my next professional photo shoot with the family to make sure I got some images that we could use to test out the Dehancer software. For the family's privacy, we're not gonna take a look at any images with their face on them, but this one shot, I think we can do a lot of work to really replicate the halation, the film grain, and the highlight bloom that you get with film photos. All right, now don't go clicking off of the video quite yet. I wanna make sure you guys see the edits I was able to make to that photo with Dehancer. So this is the raw file. And this is the edits I was able to make through that Dehancer program. So if you'd like to see the actual process for editing, it will be in part two of this video. So make sure you give me that thumbs up and hit subscribe to see that video. And I appreciate any comments you might have if you have questions or thoughts about how to use this software or if you already have it and how you've implemented it into your workflow. And if you'd like to purchase the Dehancer Lightroom plugin, you can go to dehancer.com and make sure you use that code CLALEX for 10% off anything you buy on Dehancer. So that'll wrap it up for today, but make sure you watch out for that second video where I actually take you through the process of editing that photo through Dehancer software.